When we think about the First World War, what first springs to mind is usually images of trenches, mud, machine guns, artillery and shattered trees. It's all too easy to forget the service and the sacrifice of those at sea. Yet in 1914, Britain was a great maritime power with a vast empire and trade routes that spanned the globe. When war broke out, maintaining the freedom of the seas was vital for Britain's ability to feed her population, to support her armies on the continent, and thus to continue the war. So the sailors of the Royal Navy and Merchant Navy were central to the war effort, even if their exploits are less well remembered than their land-based compatriots. The Battle of Jutland was by far the largest naval battle of the First World War and was one of its defining events. It was fought between the British and German fleets off the coast of Denmark between the 31st of May and 1st of June 1916. On the 31st of May this year at Commonwealth Wargraves Commission cemeteries and memorials from Norway to Orkney and from Plymouth to here at Chatham, we will remember the 6,000 British and Commonwealth sailors who died during the battle. Over those brief, confused and brutal hours, more than 100,000 men serving in 250 ships held the balance of the war in their hands. As the ships exchanged fire, each man, from experienced admirals to boy sailors on their first voyage at sea, shared the risk equally and did their duty. In a few cases, ships and their entire crews were destroyed in minutes. Others fought long and hard before succumbing. There were acts of bravery on all sides. One such act is commemorated here on the Chatham Naval Memorial, alongside the names of others who died at Jutland. Major Francis John William Harvey is one of three Victoria Cross recipients of the battle commemorated by the Commission. An officer of the British Royal Marine Light Infantry, Major Harvey was a specialist in naval artillery. At Jutland, he was serving on board HMS Lion, the flagship of Admiral Beatty's battlecruiser fleet when his gun position was hit by a shell. Having been seriously wounded, he ordered the magazine he was in to be flooded, preventing tons of explosives from detonating and destroying the ship and all aboard her. He quite deliberately gave his life in order to save the lives of his shipmates. At Manor Park Cemetery in Essex, the Commission cares for the grave of the youngest person to be awarded a Victoria Cross during the First World War, boy sailor John Travers Cornwall, always known as Jack Cornwall. The ship he was serving in, HMS Chester, was hit 17 times, resulting in 29 deaths and a further 49 wounded. Although mortally wounded himself, boy Cornwall remained at his post awaiting orders, determined to do his duty. He was just 16 years old. A century on, his grave is still inspected, cleaned and cared for by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and visited often by young people of similar age as he was when he died. By the time the last shots had been fired at Jutland, in just 12 hours of fighting, some 8,500 men had lost their lives, 6,000 of them British and 2,500 of them German. In numerical terms, the British came off worse but the battle failed to achieve the decisive victory each side hoped for, and the Royal Navy retained command of the sea. Germany would turn increasingly to unrestricted submarine warfare, inflicting terrible losses on the merchant fleet and those serving with it. And when the war was over, for the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, the question arose of how to remember the men and women who served and died at sea. In the majority of cases, their graves are not on land, where cemeteries or memorials could be built. The battlefields on which they fought and died cannot be easily visited. They have no known grave but the sea. Those merchant sailors lost at sea are remembered in the centre of the City of London, on the Commission's memorial at Tower Hill, next to the Tower of London. It is a small oasis of calm amidst a busy city, a place to pause and reflect, well worth a visit if you can spare a few minutes. The Royal Navy's sailors are commemorated mostly at the ports at which their vessels were based, Portsmouth, Plymouth and Chatham, on great memorials like the one behind me, where their names cast in bronze will forever be enshrined. There are graves too in cemeteries in Denmark, Sweden and Norway, in Edinburgh, the home of the battlecruiser fleet, in Orkney, overlooking Scarpa Flow, and in cemeteries and graveyards scattered throughout the country. 
visit their graves and memorials if you can, for they too deserve to be remembered. And on the 31st of May, on the 100th anniversary of the Battle of Jutland, I urge you to join us at the Commonwealth War Graves Commission in remembering all those who died at sea, not only at Jutland, but throughout the war.